Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to do lead code weekly challenge third question. Count a berry where max element appears at least k times. So basically, as per the heading, we can clearly see that it is a sliding window question because here we are required to count the sub arrays where there is one element which appears at least k times. So for counting those sub arrays, we will be sliding the window and skipping some elements. At the start, adding up the elements from the last, like this, it will be moving ahead from left to right, and this is how it becomes a sliding window question. So let us first read this question, then about the constraint, and then I'll show you the example and how to implement this question, and then finally the coding part for the same. So you are given an array integer nums and a positive integer k. So Return the number of sub arrays where maximum element of the nums appears at least k times in that sub array. A sub array is contiguous sequence of elements within an array. So here we can see that as per constraint, nums dot length is 10 to the power 5. So that's why n solution or n log n. This is that max it can go. It won't work at any n squared solution. And nums of i can at max go at be 10 to the power 6. But we are not concerned about what that is because we are just required to take the max element. That would be the only concern. So it its limit is already an integer, so we can clearly get that. And k can also get go till 10 to the power 5. So these edge cases are already handled. That if there is uh, the possibility that k is greater than nums dot length in that context also, so it is already handled here. So now the part is for this particular me show you that how it is a sliding window question and how we are required to implement it so here if we see one minute how oh, this pen is not coming Okay, fine. Oh, it came. So here, if you can see, so now the maximum element here is three, right? And the, how many times at least it need to occur is two times. So in this context only, we will be moving ahead in the same. So here, if we take this one, so we don't get any three. Then if we take this three as well, so here, how many times three is occurring? One time. So this is not the condition which is need which is basically satisfied, right? So then we'll go ahead with two. And then when we got this three, so now we can clearly see that the maximum element that is three occurs two times, right? So that's why now it satisfied the condition that at least it should occur k times, that is here two times, and who should occur? The three, that is the max element here. So that's why this is one of the possible sub array. One, three, two, and three. Now, if we eliminate eliminate this element, then also it remains two times occurring, right? So three, two, three is also one possible sub array, right? And if we add, so if we simply eradicate this three, so now it becomes two, three, right? But two, three is uh, have just one th three as the element, right? So for increasing the occurrence of that, we will be moving ahead. So we will be getting now a new sub array that is 2, 3 and 3. So if we eliminate 2, so now we will be getting a sub array 3, 3, which also satisfies the condition. But here, the thing which is mentioned is that at least k times. So basically, if 2 times 3 is there, that is fine, but it can occur more than that also. So in that context, Why anything is not working? Okay, so basically the array was 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, and one more time 3 was there, right? So now the thing is at least k times it occurs, right? 
So if we take this whole array itself, then here also at least k times it is already there, right? So this is also one of the possible sub array which is required. And if we eradicate this one, so this is also one of the possible sub array. So three, two, three, and three. So here we can clearly see there we are having one, two, three, four, five, and six total sub arrays which are which is our required answer in this particular question for this particular example. So that is the thing and this is how we are required to do this question. Basically, we will be taking two loops and in those two loops, what we will be doing is one loop would be keeping a check for the right pointer and the second loop will be keeping a check for the left pointer. Although we are using two loops and they are nested also, but the way they are being operated, it doesn't make up any n square solution. So that is the beauty of the sliding window. Because when a solution becomes n square, it's like that n times a particular will completely go in for each means 1, 2, 3, 4 up till n. For this n times other loop will run for this n time other loop will run. But that is not the case in the sliding window. If this particular pointer is going n times, then the other would also be going n times, but it would be something like that at the one, if it is going n times, then it will be completely going till n only. And no, this two to three n part would be implemented. Basically, it won't become an n square solution. It will remain two into n solution, which ultimately becomes order of n solution only. So now let us go ahead with the coding part of the same. So here this particular portion is just for taking the maximum and after taking the maximum element then we are implementing our main logic through sliding window. So here we are taking this right pointer which will be adding up elements from the right side into our array and here we will be checking if at any point the right which is there if it is equal equals to max then we will be incrementing our current and then this current would be used for checking that if current is greater than or equals to k then in that context we will be incrementing our left and decrementing our current and why decrementing our current just simply signifies that we have eradicated our that particular max element from our window so that's why we are decrementing the same and then after when we come out of this loop which simply indicates that now current is basically less than k so at that point at whatever index our left would be pointing that simply means that these are the possible number of sub arrays which were formed so far when k was greater than or equals uh, when max element count was greater than or equals to k so that's why we are adding that to result and at the end we will be returning a result so this was about the coding part and the time complexity is order of 2n and the space complexity is order of 1 because you can clearly see we are not using any extra space only the variables are being used which are not counted as a part of time or uh, space complexity here so this was all for this particular question if you have any doubt you could comment that down and if you have any other suggestion that also you can comment and if you really like the explanation do like subscribe to my channel and do share among your friends so this was all thank you